Okay, so today we're going to be taking apart this NAD stereo amplifier, the 20, sorry, the 3020B model. Okay, from the left you have your power button, your headphones output, your equalizer and balance controls, your input selectors, and your volume knob. Okay, so this is the back side. Um, this amp has a very interesting design where the output connectors are actually on the bottom and not on the back panel of the amp. And yeah, we start with our input terminals, a phono tuner and aux, and a selector switch that I don't actually know what it does. And then some 5 pin MIDI connector of some sort. Oh, that connects to tape decks. And then your preamp output and the main amp input and the soft clipping switch and then your you have your speaker terminals. Okay, so I forgot to mention the amp has two um, power outputs that are probably connected to the switch and then it has a high and low impedance setting. Uh, the older amps couldn't handle the speaker impedances as well as the newer amps can. Okay. It was Um, does your caps lock key not work? Okay, so here you can see our main output transistors. Four, four transistors, what, two MPNs, two PNPs for the two channels. Our two main filter capacitors here for the, for the positive and negative rails. A bunch of fuses. And that's pretty much it. And obviously a massive transformer. So I'm just going to record this. Released in 1978. Yeah. Um, and then by 1998, it had become the most well-known and best-selling audio amplifier in history. 320. Uh, 3020. So this is okay. 3020B. Okay, so this is the one that they fixed small problems that they had yeah. with the original one. Um, Interesting. Considered one of the most important components in the history of high fidelity music audio. Nice. Because it really um, very affordable but delivered great quality of sound. Okay, so the main volume knob is a 50k dual gang pot. Balance pot, I'm not actually sure, and the bass and treble control pots are 10k pots. I'm not sure whether they're linear or logarithmic though. Okay, so I saw this random in donut inductor or toroidal inductor thing, Nick, um, pretty much coupled with a resistor for some reason. Don't really know why that is. Um, there's another one over there. You can't really see it on the screen now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe you can see it. The two of them. Um, me and my friend, we don't really know what they are for, but still interesting. If anyone knows, please leave it in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching the video.